Good morning, Valdir kids. It's Sunday morning and it's time to worship the Lord. So please do not distract your neighbors and give all of your attention to God's Word. So in the Bible, there are many images that are used to describe our relationship with God. So for example, a very famous one is God is our shepherd and we are his sheep. And also God is our father and we are his children. That's right. And there is one particular image that the Bible uses that describes our relationship very intimately, very personal and very loving. And that relationship is between God being our groom or Jesus being our groom and his church being his bride. That is right. It is a a marriage relationship. So in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 it says so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So the Bible is as it was describing the relationship between the father or the husband and the wife the Bible describes the relationship between Jesus and his church as the groom and as the bride. And that means we are in a covenant relationship or a relationship or a contract of a promise. And that is why at weddings they say the wedding vow. So I'm holding, I'm wearing my wedding band here. And in a wedding ceremony, you use the ring. And as you exchange the ring, you say the wedding vows. And the wedding vows go something like this. In the name of God, I take you as my wife or as my husband to have and to hold from this day forward for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in death, to love and to cherish until death do us part. So it is a promise that you're making to one another saying, whatever we go through, richer or poor, in health or in in sickness, you will love one another and you will stay faithful and committed to one another as husband and wife. And you're promising that before God and before the congregants. And that is why it is a beautiful ceremony as you're exchanging the ring. And likewise, if the church is Jesus' bride, Jesus expects Nothing less than a wedding vow. So he expects us to love him with all of our hearts all the time and remain faithful and worship him and him alone. So for example, I'm married to my wife and if I'm faithful to my wife only 80% and the remaining 20% I'm faithful to another woman I am not being faithful to my wife at all, right? If I were to remain faithful to my wife, I have to remain faithful, give her all of my attention, give her all of my love 100% and to my wife alone. And that is why God wants to be first in our lives, not second, not a close 1.5 in ranking, but the first. 100% loving Him all with all your life. And today's verse is found in Exodus. Exodus chapter 34 verse 14. As God was giving the law to the people of Israel, this is what He said, For you shall worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So he wants only our hearts and he wants us to love him only in return. That is the true relationship that we ought to have between us and God. We should put nothing as number one where God would be jealous. Where God would be jealous not in a negative way but in a holy perfect way as he desires us as He desires to be number one in our lives. So do not put anything as number one, not even yourself, not even your family. Always put God first and remember that God wants to be first in our lives and in that, 
God will lead and guide and He will bless. And he, we will experience the true happiness when we put God first. So Valley of Kids, I want to challenge you to always remember to put God first and worship no other. For He is our groom. Let's all bow our eyes and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this promise. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you are jealous of us if we love anything else, Lord. So, Father, help us always to remember that you want to be number one in our lives. And I pray that we would worship you and you alone. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.